Hello, this is Jordan Hordike. This is for CS390 Independent Study Crestron Programs. Today we'll be doing integrating basic lighting controls. Now, you may notice there's a difference in audio, and that's only because I am recording in the shop today. This is the AV Workshop. We have a lighting controller hooked up to the processor. We have a second processor. This is actually Mason's. Um, it's hooked up in the shop and the lighting controller is hooked up to the processor. So later on, we will see a video or actually next door. Alongside this video, there will be a phone recorded video of the program actually working and the light turning on. This is just the framework to go behind it. So thankfully, the processor we use, the TSW760, as you've probably seen, it has a border around it. You can get a faceplate, you can press the system power on off button. This was shown in the last tutorial, or at least the one before that. Anyway, alongside that button, there was a light. We're going to be utilizing that button. So for this instance, we don't actually need anything in our touch panel, although we will include a little bit of stuff. So let me just quick start up a new one. We're going to go the independent study. It's a new file structure here, but uh, we're going to roll with it. Create a new folder. Basic lighting tutorial. So we're going to go in here. We're going to create basic lighting. And using our TSW760, same thing, we're going to create. We're just going to choose this theme. And here, it should load up any second. Oh, wait. We have to create a page. We're just going to call this index. And we're going to mark this as the first page, just so it knows, hey, this is what you're going to load first. We're technically done. We don't have to do anything else for this implementation. Although I will add a little bit of stuff real quick here. Okay, so I've added a little bit of text here, but you'll notice that it's just in the top right corner. I'm going to click on this text box and up here we have some nice alignment tools. So I'm going to click this one to evenly space it across from left to right and then the one right next to it up and down. So now this text is in the very center. Now, it may not look like it, but here this, um, this screen is actually just smaller than what the touch panel is supposed to be. So we could make it actual size and we could see the whole thing, but it's just text. I'm going to trust it. So I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to hit F12. This will compile. We're not going to send it over USB because we don't have anything hooked up, or at least a touch panel, that is. So we are done with the touch panel. So we're going to open up simple windows here. We're going to start a new simple program. I'm going to call this basic lighting. We're going to add the AV tag. Just a note, always put a tag in here. It decides that it doesn't want to work if you don't put a tag in there. So control processor, we're going to um, RMC, that's what this is. RMC3, I'm not gonna click default because I'm in the workshop and Adam, he works in here sometimes. So I'm gonna leave it non-default. So comment, basic lights on and off. And all right, so it's getting everything ready. So now we have everything we need. But in slot one, wait, was it slot one? Slot two, yeah, we're going to add our touch panel. I don't know why I'm just not really in the, in the swing of things right now. 76 TSW 760, that's what we need. I'm going to toss that right in slot three. Then, normally we would 
we would call that it. But now we need to have our actual CrestNet. So this is the Ethernet here. This is our CrestNet. We're going to open this up. We're going to double click on this. And we're going to add something. Now, Adam is letting us use something. Sorry, I bumped a stool there. This device here is a GLPP-1DIMFLV3CN-PM. We're just going to get that input real quick. So if you give me a second, I'll find the, what we need. All right. So this is the device that Adam has given us to use. Make sure that when you get your lighting controller, you pick out the exact model number. If you can't get the exact model number, talk to whoever it is you're working with on this. Um, they'll know more than you will. So this is the device we, we're going to enter it in. Now, this is where Mason and I got stuck for quite a while. We're going to open up Toolbox real quick. So we're connected via USB to the RMC. You see this little tab right here called CrestNet Devices? The lighting controller is connected via CrestNet. So we're going to take a look at these devices. Now, originally it didn't show. It just had to refresh. So here we have our GLP whatever power pack lighting controller. All the information is listed right here. And now this, this is what we want. That's the port ID. So we want A4. So notice here it's on ID 03. So we're going to click and drag this. And we're going to scroll down all the way to A4. Sweet. So now that's in the right spot. We could open this up. These are the different things you can do inside of it. So occupancy sensor, so like a motion sensor. Those are typically installed in classrooms here at Calvin. Photo cell, more for detecting light and auto setting the light based off of what we already have. We don't really want to worry about that. Remote keypad settings. There are little light switches that we can hook up to all this, but we don't need to worry about that for this. IR settings, we don't do IR. Um, yeah, and then reserved is just that. It's reserved. So we're set here in the configuration tab. We're going to hop over to the program tab. And inside the logic folder here, we're going to throw a toggle. That's basically all we need. So here we are into the logic. Now we're also going to grab this device here. We're just going to double click on that. And then we're also going to grab our touch panel. Never mind. That's not the one we want. We want the buttons on the side panel. And then we want the toggle as well. So I'm going to just minimize all this, just scooch it over to the side, because we're not worried about that. Click this little button. Helps organize everything. It's really nice. So I have a reference picture here. Let me take a peek at that, if my phone will cooperate. So for, we're going to start here. I'm going to close everything else out. We'll grab everything else in a second. Here we have the touch panel buttons. And on the lights, we're going to say light, button, press. So that's one signal that we need. Now we need the toggle, because this light button press is going to feed into the clock. This clock is the actual toggle input. So every time this clock goes high, it's going to switch between out going high and out asterisk going high. Now you can also have light set and reset. This will automatically set this out to be high, and this reset will set this out asterisk to be high. This clock will just switch which one it is. So that's where we want to get our input. Now, theoretically, we could have a light on and off switch and then have a toggle switch. Now. You don't really need both of them at the same time. So we're just going to stick with the toggle. So this output, this one is going to be light off signal. Oops. OK. And then this one is going to be light 
on signal. Okay. So the reason we put the off on top and the lights on bottom is because this one's going to default to being on when the processor is So we want the lights to start off when the processor So we don't need this part anymore, the, that, the uh, touch panel buttons. But we do still need the lights. So let's shrink that down a bit and pull this down, make it nice and big. So we are going to scroll down to right here loads full on and loads full off. So we're going to drag the lights on signal to loads full on and the lights off signal to loads off. So this is basically saying when the lights are on, turn them on. When the lights are supposed to be off, turn them off. Now, the reason, there's a difference between loads fast full and loads full. This loads full is going to make it a nice gentle increase and the lo loads fast full is just going to turn it right on. We're just going to be nice to everyone in the room and put it in the loads full on. Because as you probably experienced, jarring lights can be very distracting. So believe it or not, time to save this. We're just going to hop right out of here into the processor, new folder, basic lights tutorial. Go inside there, basic lights, tutorial. So now it's all saved. We are going to hit F12 to compile this. We're going to click yes to transfer and send it over RS, not RS-232, USB. So as you can see, we currently have a program loaded on there. This is when we were figuring it all out. Now we're going to send our basic lights tutorial. You click send, and I will get back to you once it's sending. All right, the new program has been sent. And what I said earlier about this toggle right here, here, let's close this real quick. Turns out that it defaults to this out asterisk. So if you want to swap that, go for it. This is the opposite of what you would want if you want the lights to start off. Because when I loaded the program, the lights already turned on. So at least I know the pro project works. So we're going to now close this out. We're going to close out Toolbox because we don't need that anymore. At least not right now. I'm going to open up the touch panel project. I'm going to load this basic lighting.vtz. This is going to load the system. And if I were smart, I wouldn't have actually closed out toolbox so I can write the IP. But I believe I remember it. I think that's it. So it's different from what's in my KE apartment because we're in the workshop. It's an entirely different device. Should not have the same IP. So I'm going to connect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press this button. And then over here, we have our lighting controller. And this is all hooked up via Crestnet. Uh, Adam. Tozer and someone, one of his coworkers, put this all together for us. And this is mainly just for testing purposes. So don't do this at home. Get someone else to do this for you. They are trained electricians and you are not, most likely. So running over here, we have this control, which goes over to this outlet. This outlet is powering this light here. So normally you wouldn't have a setup like this, at least I would hope you don't, because it's really jank. So again, don't do this part at home. Make sure you have a trained electrician do this for you. So when we click this button here, let me move the cursor a second. When we click that light button right there. It's going to send the signal over to here to turn the relay on. And then this light should come on. So here we go. We're going to click it, and you might hear it. That turned it on, that turned it off. So no change here, but I am going to aim over here at the light and now I'm going to click it on and now I'm going to click it off. That's the power of a toggle. So I just totally realized that absolutely there is a typo. 
I feel great about myself. This is Jordan Hordike, and stay tuned.